Good evening. Welcome back. I'm Beth Farnsworth. And I'm CJ Ward. We start off with fantastic news. The 101 freeway is back open. It opened up about well, less than 30 minutes ago. That's right. I feel bad for the people stuck on the 154 right now, though, I have to say. News Channel reporter Blake Devine is live along the highway tonight <laughs> on the 101. How are things looking so far? Well, Beth and CJ, right now, there's no cars yet behind me, but you're going to hear the sound of cars coming down this freeway for the first time in four days. Now, this freeway had been closed since Monday because of the fire, and obviously, around 6 p.m. this evening, the CHP finally decided to open things up, and people are calmly and driving down, as you see right now, because both the north and southbound sides of the 101 had been closed because of the Alisol fire, burning in the mountains above the Gaviota coast. And obviously that allowed a lot of flames that obviously got near the medians and hopped the freeway on Monday night. Also, a lot of smoke was in this area. So CHP and other first responders did not feel that it was safe to do so. But as a result, this caused some chaos on the 154 as people were seeing very, very long commute times and were growing increasingly frustrated going to the north and south counties both ways. But now. All that chaos can be put past us as the freeway is now open. However, people should still be aware to be able to look past once they drive past the fire. They will see it, especially at the nighttime hours. And they should be aware of the smoke and drive safely as they go about their commute. But finally, we can finally say that the 101 is open at this moment in time and everyone can calmly collectively breathe a sigh of relief. Reporting live. On the Highway 101 this evening on the Gaviota Coast, I'm News Channel reporter Blake Devine. All right, so happy to make that announcement. Thank you so much, Blake. Thank you, Blake. Well, the Earl Warren Showgrounds is bustling with activity as it hosts the base camp for the Alisol Fire. And News Channel reporter Reed Harmon is there. He joins us live. And Reed, base camps are always an interesting place to see how the firefighters regroup. Absolutely, and this is a perfect time right now to go live as people are starting to receive their meals and they're heading my way, so you're going to see them right behind me. But crews are starting to make their way back, get some meals, trying to refuel just a little bit before they go back out as well. But it's just been an incredible experience to kind of just walk around throughout the day and talk to different spots within this camp and see what they're all about. And, and to be able to know, you know that they all have that same message and it's that they've been able to convert this parking lot into just a little city. And it starts with those sleeping arrangements, which starts with those tents right behind me, I should say. Depending on which agency you're with will determine where you could be sleeping. There are tents lined up on the ground for some crew members. Others will find local motels so you can have clean sheets and hot showers. There are trailers on site here as well, but in actuality, most of the people that I spoke with are getting maybe three hours of sleep, and this little city is becoming larger as the days go on. So, so when it's determined that an incident is so complex that they need to bring in a type one incident management team, that team shows up with a whole support structure. That structure involves essentially a, a a mobile city. It arrives with uh, a kitchen unit, it arrives with sleeping quarters, it arrives with uh, clerical services, and that's what you see here today at, at uh, Earl Warren Showgrounds. U.S. Foods provides this camp with constant food around the clock. According to some people I spoke with from the California Conservation Corps, these trucks can come in up to every 12 hours with food and water and Gatorade, things like that, as crew members will make their way back to camp to refuel, relax, do what they need to do before they have to go back out. What is brand new to the camp as of just a few hours ago is showers. They will be using six to 10,000 gallons of water each day for showering. And there's also on-site fueling, which is called in by Cal Fire. And the trucks carry up to 3,000 gallons of gas and even more diesel because most of these trucks that go out on the fires are fueled by diesel. And the camp serves roughly 2,000 people when it came to breakfast and right now I can I'm probably 50 yards away from where the food is and I can smell it. The dinner tonight, it's going to be mashed potatoes and brisket as well. Live in Santa Barbara, I'm News Channel reporter Reed Harmon. All right, time to check back with Kelsey now. And Kelsey, we're talking about this. CHP just reopened. The trains are running once again, so the winds have calmed down. Will they stay that way overnight? They will stay that way overnight. This is really positive news for this firefight. The wind advisories that we've been seeing in place for the last several nights are not the case for tonight. We do not have an advisory in place. In fact, winds are almost non-existent. I checked in on a sensor there. Wind coming from... 
that means you're not seeing wind out there. And we're seeing that in our live really not having a wind issue, which is great news for this fire fight and gaining that containment and control. Now, as far as what we can expect as we look ahead to tomorrow's forecast, winds staying calm. In fact, staying in the single digits there on Friday, they will shift a little bit, but winds are not going to be the issue as we look ahead because we're just going to be seeing these nice calm conditions throughout those overnight five hours. You can see between Goleta and Gaviota, this is the fire zone there, and we are expecting to just stay in the single digits all throughout tonight into tomorrow. Beth and CJ, really positive news there, but we do have now critical fire weather down south and a big warm up. I'll talk more about that in a couple minutes. So for now, back over to you. All right. Thank you, Kels. Well, the helicopters and the air tankers are critical in the firefight, especially now that most of the firefight is deep in the canyons. And News Channel 3's Scott Sheehan joins us now and shows us where the flames are moving. The sound of airplanes and helicopters is music to firefighters ears especially for those who live in the canyons where the Alisal fire is burning. Helicopters are getting water from anywhere they can, some from the ocean. Another from a pond on top of Refugio Canyon. That pond belongs to the Reagan Ranch, also known as the Western White House during the Ronald Reagan presidency. Workers at the ranch say the Alisal fire is deja vu for them. It was a Sherpa fire back in 2016. Came within about a quarter mile of the ranch, which is about the distance that this fire is now to the south. So that one was, uh, it started on the east uh, off the ranch property and then burned, you know, all the way down to the freeway that first night. And uh, likewise, this one started to the west of the ranch and uh, it burned also down to the freeway the first night. Hand crews from Northern California, San Bernardino, San Diego, Orange and Ventura counties are all helping the fight. And unlike the first two days of the Alisal fire, day four has had a coordinated air attack with helicopters dropping loads within minutes of each other. Reagan ranch workers are also taking steps to protect the iconic property. We put in uh, six hydrants. We've got lots of water on the property. And so, uh, you know, we feel like we're well prepared, but you're, you can never be sure. And it's, uh, you know, it's an irreplaceable historic uh, property and structures. So we just don't want to lose it. Along the Gaviota Coast, I'm News Channel reporter Scott Sheehan.